Welcome to this tutorial on the basic use of the autopilot in the Mirage F1. We will go over the methods of engaging and disengaging the autopilot, the main PA or attitude hold mode, the alt altitude hold mode, the cap selected heading mode, use of the BIP trim adjustment feature, and the typical limitations, indications and warnings associated with the autopilot. Hello fellow virtual aviators, we are back in the expergifacient Mirage F1 and today we'll be looking at utilising the autopilot to assist in flight. As you may have already found out, the Mirage F1 can be quite twitchy on the controls and requires a lot of trimming and adjustment to get it to behave the way you want it to. The autopilot suite found in the Mirage F1 is very similar to other Dassault jets, and for the time it was derived, is quite sophisticated. Before we move on to other topics such as navigation, sensors and combat, I feel it is important to go over some fundamental systems such as the autopilot, for which I make no apology. Over the course of the series, we will apply the autopilot at various stages and during various different operations. So, business before pleasure. The majority of the autopilot controls are located here, on the left shoulder of the front dash. Five Cori type switches control the various modes. When each mode is activated, the switch will illuminate in various different combinations of red and green lights. The lights can be tested and demonstrated by pressing the Autopilot Indicator Test button here. Once the modes are activated, the brightness of the indicator lights can be adjusted with this knob here. The first switch, labelled PA for Pilot Automatique or Automatic Pilot, is the master switch. When this is engaged, the autopilot will maintain the aircraft's attitude in terms of pitch and roll at the time the button was pressed. This mode must be engaged first before any other mode can be applied. By subsequently pressing the second switch, labelled ALT for Altitude, the autopilot will also maintain the aircraft's altitude. In other words, it will adjust the pitch until we have no vertical speed, whilst also maintaining the roll set by the PA button previously. So let's set a rolling attitude and then press the PA button to engage the autopilot. The green light on the switch indicates that the mode is activated and functioning correctly, so the autopilot will endeavour to maintain this role indefinitely so long as it has sufficient airspeed to do so. Now we can see from our vertical speed indicator that we are losing altitude, so let's also engage the altitude hold mode with the second switch whilst also maintaining this role. We can see that the vertical speed has normalised and our altimeter is now reading a constant 17,000 feet. Again, the autopilot will endeavour to maintain this indefinitely, provided we have the airspeed. By disengaging the autopilot with a second push of the PA button, the lights on the indicators will turn red and begin to flash, to warn us that we are now in full control of the aircraft. When engaging the autopilot PA attitude hold mode, the aircraft's role at the time of pressing the switch will determine its behaviour. If the aircraft's role is less than 10 degrees, the autopilot will level out the aircraft and fly the current heading when the system is armed. If the roll is greater than 10 degrees, the autopilot will endeavour to maintain the roll angle.
With the autopilot engaged, it can be temporarily disconnected using the autopilot disconnect trigger, a switch on the HOTAS control stick, which we need to have bound. Pulling the trigger will allow us to make adjustments to our attitude whilst keeping the system armed. When the trigger is then released, the autopilot holds the attitude at the time of the release. So, here we can see that the autopilot is armed and functioning together with the altitude hold. If we now depress the autopilot disconnect trigger, the indicator lights turn red, the PA indicator steady, and the altitude indicator flashing. But a master caution warning is not sounded. Keeping the disconnect trigger depressed, we can then set a new attitude with the stick. Then, when the disconnect trigger is released, the autopilot automatically re-engages, albeit just the basic attitude hold. Altitude hold automatically resets to off. Should we so desire, altitude hold can then be re-engaged by pressing its switch again. If required, the autopilot can be completely disengaged in three different ways. The first is to simply press the autopilot PA button a second time when the system is armed. If this is done, the indicator lights of all previously armed functions of the autopilot will flash as red to remind us it is no longer functioning. After 10 seconds, all but the PA button will extinguish. To remove the flashing PA indicator, press the autopilot disconnect trigger on the stick. This tells the Mirage F1 that we are acknowledging the system has been disengaged. The second method is to press the autopilot disengage lever on the control stick. This is a different switch to the disconnect trigger and must also be bound. Using the disengage lever is seen as more of an emergency method of halting the use of the autopilot. When the lever is pressed, the autopilot is disengaged as before, but the master warning will also sound. The PA warning light will also illuminate on the warning light panel. In this instance, the master warning can be silenced by pressing the autopilot disconnect trigger. Like before, this will also acknowledge the disengagement and extinguish the flashing PA indicator on the autopilot panel at the same time. The third and most drastic method is to simply apply significant force to the control stick in either pitch or roll. As this may be considered by the Mirage F1 to be pilot error, the master warning will also sound in this case. This can be dealt with in the same way, silenced using the disconnect trigger, or by pressing the master warning button on the front dash. When the autopilot is engaged, minor adjustments can be made to pitch and roll using the trim hat on the control stick. This is part of a system of the autopilot known as the Beep Trim System, or BIP. By pressing the trim hat in a particular direction, a signal pulse is sent to the autopilot to adjust the control surfaces of the Mirage F1. A single pulse in a roll direction modifies the heading by approximately 2 degrees. A single pulse in a pitch direction adjusts the pitch by approximately 0.8 degrees. Okay, here we are flying with a heading of 077 degrees with our autopilot engaged, and we are going to press the trim hat left five times, which should turn us left by 10 degrees. So one, two, three, four, five. And we'll just allow the aircraft to turn and control itself, and it should roll out at approximately 067 degrees. These bit trim inputs do sometimes seem a bit slow to react, but trust in the system, it will work. And she's pretty much there. Let's roll back right with 10 pulses from the trim hat, 
which should turn us right by 20 degrees. So hopefully we'll roll out at 087 degrees. We can do the same for pitch. If we have altitude hold armed, this will automatically disconnect as we begin to climb or descend. So pitching up. And we can then re-engage altitude hold when we have achieved our desired altitude. Same again, let's descend by pitching down with the trim controls. Altitude hold has once again disengaged. And we will re-engage altitude hold when we are at approximately 14,000 feet. Using the bit trim allows us to make minor adjustments to our flight parameters and gain some precision control over the aircraft. And it was not unusual for actual Mirage F1 pilots to fly the aircraft like this when navigating. The autopilot does have some limitations. Consider this situation with a high pitch and rate of climb. Here, the autopilot attitude hold mode is engaged to maintain the climb. If, however, the altitude hold is then engaged, a sudden and violent pitch down would be required to level out. The autopilot cannot handle such drastic maneuvers and will disengage. A better way of performing this would be to use the disconnect trigger to then pitch down manually until vertical speed is normalized. Then the altitude hold can be applied. Similarly, the autopilot may not engage when pitch and roll are at extremes. For example here when the roll is larger than 60 degrees. The autopilot can operate above Mach 1. However, when traversing through the transonic range, the autopilot will revert back to its most basic function. Supplementary modes, such as altitude hold, will be temporarily suspended, indicated by a green flashing light. Here we have our afterburner lit, and at approximately Mach 0.95, there we go, altitude hold temporarily disconnects, indicated by the flashing green light. After we pass through the sound barrier at about Mach 1.05, the mode will reconnect. The same will be observed as we decrease speed out of the supersonic range. Note that the altimeter needle is changing at the present time, but will normalize once below approximately Mach 0.95, when the mode re-engages. When navigating between points of interest, the Mirage F1's autopilot can be made to steer the aircraft onto a selected heading using the CAP mode. On the IDN navigation indicator, the selected heading is marked by a beige coloured carrot, which can be adjusted. A similar carrot is found on the navigation indicator of the Mirage F1EE. The position of the carrot is changed using the cap affiche or selected heading knob found here on the right console. 
We are currently flying at a heading of 060 degrees. We will set our selected heading to a 120 degrees. No change in heading will occur until, with the autopilot armed, the cap curry switch is pressed on the autopilot panel. The autopilot will then turn the Mirage F1 onto the selected heading using a bank of no more than 45 degrees. Cap mode can be maintained, although when the correct heading is achieved it doesn't need to be. Alternatively, it can be disengaged and the next required selected heading can then be set on the IDN. So let's go for a heading of 180 degrees. When we are ready to turn to the next heading, we can simply re-engage it by pressing the cap switch again. This can be useful when coordinating a particular course during your flights. Well, as ever, I hope that was useful for you. We have already used the Root and Glide Slope modes in our previous tutorial on Instrument Flight Rules Landing, but we shall be using them again in our upcoming tutorials on Navigation. Here we have covered the fundamental modes of the autopilot, which should be enough to get you going. If you are wondering, Expergefacient describes something that awakens or causes arousal. With heartfelt gratitude to my patrons, especially Yan11, Lakota21, Plabs and Blake Armin, your support will always be thankfully received and faithfully applied. Feel free to do the usual thing, like, subscribe, comment and share, but until next time, virtual aviators, keep on rocking, keep on flying. This is Reva saying, last call.